Hello friends, welcome to healthcare today. Today we are going to discuss an important problem where most of the common people say that there is an accumulation of fluid in the lungs. What is it exactly called? How is it diagnosed? What will we do once we found out that there is fluid in your lungs? So as you, say, as you can see in the picture, in the center of the picture you can see the lung. With every breath the lung inflates, once you leave the breath the lung deflates. So if you see there is a soft jelly like cover around the lung which is protecting the lung to make it friction free. This is called pleura. This pleura is made up of two layers, one inner layer and one outer layer. The inner layer is tightly adherent to the lung, the outer layer is attached to the rib cage. So if you, if you see for any individual, every day around 3 liters of fluid is generated and it is absorbed in this layer. So at any point of time when you see the patient, you can see only 15 to 25 ml fluid which is available. But if this fluid increases in size, this is called pleural effusion. The increase might be due to over secretion or due to delayed absorption. But if this increase in fluid leads to breathlessness, also many times most of the patients start with an initial symptom like having sharp pain while they are taking deep breath or speaking or coughing. This is typically called pleuritic chest pain. When you have this typical pleuritic chest pain, please visit a pulmonologist so that you can perform an x-ray and see whether there is any pleural effusion is associated or not. So once you know that you have fluid in your lung, once you are diagnosed with pleural effusion, what should you do? So once you know that it is a pleural effusion, you have to con consult a pulmonologist as early as possible. Because the first thing we need to do is, we need to remove the fluid and check whether it is infective or non-infective. So the infective group, it contains more commonly three things, which are bacterial infections, tubercular infections and malignancy. Though malignancy is not an infective condition, Due to the biochemical nature of the fluid, we place malignancy into infective group which is also called as exudative in scientific terminology. Coming to the non-infective group, it is usually due to damage of other organs. Since the lung is a receiver organ, the primary damage happens in the other organ and lung is a receiving organ, thereby you can see symmetrical pleural effusion in both the lungs. Another thumb rule is, infective pleural effusions are usually unilateral, whereas non-infective pleural effusions are bilateral and symmetric. So the non-infective group is usually used, is due to heart failure, kidney failure and liver failure. Once you diagnose that the pleural effusion is non-infective, if you treat the primary ailment, in case of heart you give diuretics, in case of kidney you give, dial, uh, you give dialysis, in case of liver you su support the um, protein because in liver failure you see hypoalbuminemia, which is the primary culprit leading to bilateral pleural effusion. Once you increase the patient's pleural, uh, protein diet giving him albumin infusions, most of his issues will be sorted out. Coming to non-infective group, once you reach the pulmonologist, the first thing he will do is he will put in a small needle after giving anesthesia and he will remove the fluid and send it for analysis. Through analysis, we will understand whether it is a tubercular fluid, whether it is bacterial fluid, whether it, whether it is malignancy. So many times there will be a diagnostic ambiguity between malignancy and tuberculosis. So some, in such cases, the pulmonologist performs another procedure which is called medical thoracoscopy. He makes a small cut in your thoracic cavity through ultrasound guidance. There will be a small scope which is called thoracoscope which is inserted into the pleural cavity. We will remove the, all the fluid at the same point of time and we will take biopsy from the abnormal area so that the biopsy can be analyzed by the pathologist. So you, the pathologist will give, give us the exact clue why this thing has happened and once we are sure that it is tubercular, we start with anti-tubercular therapy. Once it, we are sure that it is malignancy, we try to find out what is the primary malignancy and treat accordingly. Next, after diagnosing, now we know that it is bacterial pneumonia or a bacterial pneumonia leading to pleural effusion, what will you do? Many times there will be collection of fluid leading to pus because the glucose level is extremely low and high levels of LDH are noted that thereby indicating that it is MPMA which is scientifically pyothorax. So at, th at that point of time, patient will be very toxic, he will, having, he will be having high fever, he will be having breathlessness, also he will complain of tenderness, he will not allow you to touch here. That is a sign that it is an MPMA, you should drain the fluid immediately. So that time, the pulmonologist does a procedure where he can put in a small chest tube and remove all the pus which is accumulated. Once the pus is removed from the cavity, patient, the lung will get time to expand and the patient improves spontaneously. And once we remove the fluid, we also send it for analysis, thereby knowing what is the culprit organism and accordingly antibiotics will be given so that you will be alright in a matter of one to two weeks. 
in case of tuberculosis the tubercular therapy is very simple we give it we give medicines for 6 months which are 2 months of intensive phase and 4 months of con continuous phase now once you are diagnosed with tuberculosis what is the point in uh, going for early removal of this fluid so many a times patients have pleural effusion first so that it is an extra pulmonary TB because it is outside the lung if you can see in the picture the fluid is in the outside the lung so it is an extra pulmonary TB so thereby the patient is not infective many times if the patient ignores the symptoms if he is having light pleuritic chest pain cough and some loss of weight and loss of appetite still he is not consulting the doctor what will happen this extra pulmonary TB will transform into pulmonary TB the infection transforms into pulmonary TB thereby making the patient contagious you will start infecting the other patients. That is why once, once you are diagnosed with pleural effusion, try to meet a good pulmonologist so that he will diagnose your problem, start tubercular therapy and you will be improving as soon as possible. We care about you.